In February of 2012, for the first time ever, I gave a presentation of my book, Am I Bipolar Waking Up, to about 25 psychiatrists and psychologists at the largest hospital in Latin America, São Paulo's Hospitals das Clinicas. The presentation went very well, so well that I thought it would be a great idea to share a big part of it here with you on YouTube. So here we go. Back in 1996, when I was 29 years old, I found myself in the middle of a full-blown career crisis. Even though I graduated from the University of Toronto four years earlier, I was still earning an embarrassing salary and it just seemed like my career was a dead end. I was going nowhere. I worked in the media department of an advertising agency where I had accepted a very low position in the company thinking that I would get rapidly promoted. But this didn't happen, mainly because it was obvious to everyone that I didn't like what I was doing and in fact a lot of the time I was quite depressed. Looking for a way out of my dilemma, I decided to sign up for a self-help seminar called the Landmark Forum. There, together with about 150 others, I learned many new concepts and did different exercises in order to get in contact with my deepest thoughts and feelings. I found the course to be very inspiring and in fact when I went home at night I would find it very difficult to sleep. In fact I was probably only sleeping about four hours a night. On the second day of the course we did a short five minute meditation with the objective of confronting our fears. There we were asked to imagine ourselves in a very dangerous situation and feel what that felt like. Now in the first minutes of the meditation I didn't feel any fear at all, but then I remembered a scuba diving accident that I had had about two months earlier. During this diving accident I was about 90 feet below sea level when I had an equipment problem. I lost my weight belt and started to shoot to the surface. It was a very dangerous situation in which I could have died. During the meditation, I felt the full force of that moment of the accident return, and I felt this punch in my chest and began to cry. Returning to my house that night, I felt completely different. My five senses were all sharper, and I could see many details in towels and curtains that I had never noticed before. I also started to have many insights into my life and into the world that we live in, and during the night, I started to write all of these things down in a notebook because it was impossible for me to sleep. During that time I was living with my parents and in the middle of the night I had an important conversation with my mother about some issues I thought we had in our relationship and I also felt the need to confess some sins that had happened years earlier, you know, things that nobody in my family even knew about. I was very emotional during this time but I was still functioning. When I returned to the course the next day I felt lighter and happier than maybe I had ever been in my life. For all of my life, I'd had this sensation that I just didn't know enough, that I needed to know more, I needed more information. But in that moment, arriving at the course, I felt totally satisfied, almost like I was in a paradise. I continued in that state until the last night of the course when I had this big insight. I started to think that I couldn't possibly receive the information that I was getting or have the sensations that I was having until I died. And that's when it hit me. I was actually dead. I realized that I had died during my scuba diving accident a few months earlier and that my life since that moment had been a sort of preparation for where I was really headed, which was heaven or some form of nirvana. I also concluded that since I was dead but I wasn't quite in heaven that I must be in some sort of purgatory where everyone around me was really an angel. They looked human but they were actually angels and they were all there to help me in this process of purification. The last night of the course was held at a very upscale hotel and after the last meeting I entered an empty ballroom of the hotel completely alone thinking, okay now I'm going to go to my final destination, I'm going to heaven. But how I would arrive there I didn't know. I just had this idea that somehow I needed to meet God in a purer state. And so I took off my shirt. After I felt that the whole thing was a kind of a test for me set up by God and as part of the test I needed to let go of all material belongings and all of my fears. In that moment I also recognized that I needed to pee but I was afraid to do so in the hotel ballroom. Recognizing my fear, I chose to face it, peeing right there on the carpet and then lying down on top of my own urine. Laying there, I started to feel many energies leaving my body, my legs, heart, eyes, everything. I thought that I was leaving earth piece by piece in some way. 
And then after all these energies left, I saw a pink light above me, which I took as a sign of God's love. After some time, security guards arrived and started to speak with me, asking me to put my shirt back on, but I refused. Later, some people from the course arrived, again insisting that I put my clothes on, but feeling that this was all a test, I also took off my jeans, shoes, and socks as well, until I was just in my underwear. Eventually, the police arrived, handcuffed me, and took me to the psychiatric hospital in an ambulance, but still, I was sure that I was headed for heaven. When we arrived at the hospital, I was speaking to everybody in a loud voice, namely because everyone around me was asking me to be quiet and I didn't want to be controlled. I was very resistant to people trying to control me. My father arrived shortly after, and with him by my side, I spontaneously went into a form of regression. I remember my childhood and felt that I was flying through space and time. I recalled the film A 2001 Space Odyssey and felt a strong connection to the apes in that movie making ape sounds in the hospital bed. I felt my imagination full of love and the happiness of memories of my life and began to think of the hospital as a huge spaceship sailing through the galaxy for heaven. However, even though I was quite happy, I had no idea how angry everyone was becoming with me because I wouldn't stop talking and yelling. Eventually, the psychiatrist, four security guards, and a nurse with a syringe came into the room to give me an injection in my thigh. Handcuffed to the bed in nothing but my underwear with five people standing over me, it was a horrible sensation. Later that night, the psychiatrist spoke with my parents, telling them that I probably had schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, but that it may also be a one-time episode. Waking up about 24 hours later, I saw that rather than being in heaven, I was still stuck in the hospital. It was then that I realized that my reality probably wasn't going to change much more than that. So when I had my first meeting with the next psychiatrist, I decided to act differently. I told them my name and explained that the crisis was some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder, which was related to my scuba diving accident. Honestly, I wasn't sure of anything, if I was dead or alive, but I knew that I wanted to leave that hospital as soon as possible, so I told them what they wanted to hear. Luckily, I was released and returned to my parents' house after about four days. I was still sensitive, and I didn't want to see anybody, but I began to return to normal without medications. A few people in my family suggested that I see a psychologist to understand what had happened, but to me, what I'd been through was a completely spiritual experience and I didn't think that was something a psychologist would understand. And besides, even though my experience at the hospital was hard for everyone, I was feeling much better. Before the experience, I felt like I was in a prison. After, I felt free. When I finally returned to full-time work about five months later, my career, which had been so frustrating, improved quickly. While not entirely satisfied with advertising, I was able to get a much better position in a new company, and there my boss was so happy with my work and my attitude that he raised my salary three times in the first year. In addition, I also started to explore other areas that interested me, looking for a more spiritual line of work than advertising. And during this exploration, I discovered the books of Dr. Stanislav Grof. Reading his book, The Stormy Search for the Self, I found that all of my spiritual symptoms in my crisis were there, and the confirmation of this condition as not a mental illness, but as what Dr. Groff called it, a spiritual emergency, was a huge validation. A few months later, pursuing my spiritual interests, I went to Peru, and it was there that I met my future wife, Lysia, and since that time we've had many adventures together. Eventually, we would travel her country of Brazil together for seven months, and I would finally leave my career and move to Sao Paulo, Brazil sometime later. Here, I started working as a private English teacher for executives. No, the work wasn't exactly spiritual, but I always liked the opportunity to genuinely connect with different people, and working without a boss did feel like heaven. So what were the results of my so-called mental illness? A better job, more money, lots more adventure in my life, a great relationship which continues until today, and a whole new country. I never had a relapse, never took medication, and never saw a psychiatrist or a psychologist for my condition once I was released from the hospital. But what was most important was how I felt in my heart. Like I said, before I was in a prison, after I was free. 
So is that it? Was it really that simple? Well, not exactly. But if you want to know the whole story, why not check out my book, Am I Bipolar or Waking Up? by me, Sean Blackwell. It's available at Amazon.com or see my website for the free excerpt at BipolarOrWakingUp.com.